Okay, Thomas Freed here, tax-freedom.com, the website, that's Tax Freedom with a hyphen. The YouTube channel is at Tax Freedom with a hyphen. And the website that I have that helps people answer any correspondence letter that they may have received from the IRS for $50 or less is irszoom.com. So, as I explained in previous video, we don't really have a tax system in America, but for purposes of this video, let's pretend we have a tax system here in America. And of course, with the tax season coming up and the filing deadline on April 15th, unless you ask for the extension, I thought today might be a good time to walk you through how to use the law to determine what form is required by law to be filed in conjunction with the Section 1 income tax imposed. And just exactly what result that legal investigation leads you to. So, previous to 1980, it was very, very hard to do this because the government hadn't put in place any mechanism to ensure that the forms, the information collection requests that the government was using was in compliance with what the statutes actually required or mandated be collected and maintained in the way of information sets. So, in 1980, the government was being overwhelmed with way too much paperwork and they passed a new law called the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1980. The Paperwork Reduction Act was intended to prevent the government from collecting more information than was required by law. And up here you can see we're going to look at the legislation in the Code of Federal Regulations, how it was codified. It's in Title 26 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 602, Section 602.101. Now, what happened here is when they passed the Paperwork Reduction Act in 1980, every single government agency had to create and submit to the Office of Management and Budget, OMB, a cross-referenced table that showed all of the forms being used by that government agency cross-linked, cross-referenced to the code sections that the agency believed required the form to be used. And OMB took this information from all the agencies. Here's all the forms that we use, and each form is linked to the laws that we believe justify the use of the form and require the collection of the information. So OMB was confronted with a monstrous task. They had to go through all the tables from all the agencies, all the forms, all the statutes, and make sure that no form was asking for more information than the law required or that the law didn't require. And they modified and edited all the forms so that the forms the government now uses only have on them requesting on them that you provide the information that the law says is necessary or that you have to provide. So what this table has made it possible to do is take any given code section in the United States Code, our written law, and then go to this table and look up what forms are required under what code sections. So, the federal personal income tax is imposed in Title 26, United States Code, Section 1, and it took the IRS over five years to comply with this paperwork reduction mandate. All the other agencies did it within a year, and the tables were pretty much complete by 84, except for the IRS. And I'm pretty sure the IRS spent five years waiting before fulfilling the requirement to submit this information to OMB because 
there was a lot of focus on the Paperwork Reduction Act and what was being done to forms and how they were modified. And it turned out they were asking for this information and didn't need it and that information and it wasn't required. Any IRS didn't want to be put under the microscope and face that sort of scrutiny. So they waited five years for all of the hoopla to die off, and then they submitted their table to OMB, who went through and faithfully processed all of the information in it and published the results of the IRS's <coughs> submission. And that is now published in, as I said, Title 26, Code of Federal Regulations, CFR for short, Part 602, Section 602.101. And that's what we're going to look at right now. This is how you can use the law to look up to see what tax return form is required by law for to be in compliance with Code Section 1. Section 1, tax imposed, our federal personal income tax that they make you pay every year on April 15th. And submit the Form 1040, which, of course, is a voluntary giving up of your Fourth Amendment rights to be secure in your person, papers, houses, and effects, and giving up your Fifth Amendment right not to provide any information that may be used against you in a court of law, because, of course, anything you put on a Form 1040 can be used against you in a court of law. And you may have thought there was a contradiction there that you can be required to give up the security of your papers, which of course were your economic records, your own financial records in the 1790s and early 1800s when this was all written up, and give up your right to refuse to provide information that may be used against you in a court of law. So if you thought there was a contradiction, you're right, there is. And let's look and see what the IRS published in the law in 1986, satisfying the requirements of the Paperwork Reduction Act. And I'm sure they didn't do this happily. <laughs> and voluntarily. Okay, so the code section that imposes the federal income tax right here, section one, tax imposed, that's right here. You have to look at the little black hour. It's under here. I'll put the hand underneath it there. The hand fingers are pointing right at it. 1.1-1. One one. Now, this is all for Title 26. That's up here. Title 26 CFR. 26 CFR Part 601. And this is Part 1.1, Part 1, Chapter 1, Section 1. That's where the income tax, the federal income tax is imposed. So on the left side of the column of the table here, we have the code sections that you can check. And this one, 1.1, 1 .1, is the tax imposed. Now over here on the right side, you have the OMB document control numbers that are assigned to the various forms. See, they don't make it easy. They don't just write over here, Form 1040, Form da da da, Form da da da. No, it's 1545-0067 is the only form required by the section imposing the income tax, Section 1. So now you have to go and look up what 1545-0067 is, which we're going to do. But keep in mind that these are the OMB document control numbers, and you can see from down below here, this 126.1, it has multiple forms listed, 0022 and 0030. Now, all the IRS forms start with the prefix 1545. That's the prefix that was assigned to the IRS form group, but you can see in the table that if there is more than one form required, it is listed right there. This, this code section has multiple, and code section one only has one form. So then, if form 1040 is the form required by law as published in the law right here, this is Code of Federal Regulations, these are the regulations that implement the statutes, section one imposes the tax, 1545-0067 is the OMB document control number. 
on the form. It's the only form listed for section one. Only form. There's only one. And here we are. Here's the form 1040. Now, this is back from 1993. I'm going to show you a form more recently in just a moment, but this is just to show you this goes all the way back to 1986 when they complied with the law. And I've had this online since 1993 now for 30 years, and people just you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink. So here's the form 1040, 1993. The OMB document control number on the form is 1545-0074, which is exactly the same as 1545-0067. Uh, whoops. They're different. The form required is 0067. But the document control number on the 1040 is 0074. Doesn't match. Form 1040 is not the form shown in the law as being required by law by the section that imposes the tax, tax imposed. What's going on? How can that be? They put 75 million Form 1040s in the post office every year. Doesn't that mean everybody has to go and get one and use it? Because that's what they put in the post office? That's not what the law says. The OMB document control number on the Form 1040 does not match the number on the form required by law as listed in the law. And this is the only place in the law you can look this up. It's not in the statutes. It's not in any of the regulations. They hid it in this table so that you will never see it. And what is the form? that this document control number 1545-0067 that's required by the tax imposed. What is the form that that control number is on? Oh, look, here it is down here. Form 2555. What? Uh, here it is. Here's the OMB control number 1545-0067. And what's the name of the form? It's not domestic income, foreign earned income. Foreign, foreign earned income. That's what you're required to report under section one tax imposed. Oh, look what it says right here. For use by US citizens and resident aliens only. Citizens and resident aliens report foreign earned income. If you remember from previous presentations, you remember that the income tax only applies to non-resident aliens. Only collected from non-resident aliens and foreign corporations from 1913 to 1942. Citizens didn't pay tax. They only paid tax on their foreign earned income. Why? Because the original legislation enacting the original income tax in 1913 was named the Underwood Simmons Tariff Act of October 3rd, 1913. Tariff is one form of an impost. An impost is one form of the three powers to tax indirectly granted by the Constitution under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1. And the impost power is specifically the power to tax foreign persons, foreign imports, foreign activity, and in foreign places like in territories and possessions that are not actually part of the United States, but are under the jurisdictional control of the federal government. And it's the privilege of being protected in those possessions by the government that makes persons there subject to the application of the tax. The so impost is the power to tax foreign activity. The income tax was enacted under a tariff act. The tariff act required the collection of the tax for only from foreign persons, 
And Form 1040 isn't required by law by the section that imposes the tax. And the only form that is required is a form that would be required under a tariff act enacted in the form of an impost on foreign activity. And that's what you report is the earnings in a from foreign spaces, foreign earned income. Basically, that means only nations with the tax treaty and in territories and possessions of the United States, because the federal government possesses no territorial or legislative jurisdiction whatsoever to tax you outside of those spaces outside of the country that they don't have a treaty with or that they don't already control as possessions. So when you use the law to look up in the law what form is required to pay the federal income tax, what you find is Form 2555, Foreign Earned Income, is the form that carries the OMB document control number that's listed in the laws being required by law under the code section that imposes the tax. Form 1040 is not a form that is required by law. It has never been a form that is required by law. And the federal income tax doesn't tax the fruits of labor derived from the simple exercise of your right to work because rights aren't taxable. Neither the possession of the right beforehand neither nor the exercise of it after the fact and the law very carefully stays away from attempting to tax your earnings earned in the 50 states and i'm going to be doing more videos that explain all of this from beginning to end starting of course with 1913 and the 16th amendment which also doesn't do what you've been lied to about it, claiming it does do. So, April 15th is coming. Form 1040 isn't required by law. I would suggest that if you want to send this administration a message, that instead of filing a Form 1040, you file an extension that for extension requests that gives you an automatic extension until September. And the only people who should file a Form 1040 are those people who are owed a refund. And that way, we can hoist them on their own petard and use April 15th to drain the Treasury paying out refunds rather than fill it collecting tax that isn't owed and isn't required to be reported on April 15th. Now, what you do come September when the extension comes up is up to you. So let's look. Bang. Form 2555 foreign earned income. Here's the whole thing. Here's the OMB document control number 1545-0067. Here's the Form 1040 from 2023, here's the OMB document control number, 1545-0074. Now, this form is not required by law. Now, when this information was first found in the law in the early 1990s, it began to be introduced in court in civil and criminal actions that the government was prosecuting against citizens for failure to file. And when this information began to convince juries that the government was lying to them, not the defendant, and the government started losing jury trials based on the presentation of this irrefutable evidence and the lack of any statutory provisions that contradict it, the government decided they couldn't have this information public anymore. So they removed the entry from the table. So now when you try and look up, since 2000, when you try to look up what form is required by law, 
The form doesn't show anything at all is being required. But they didn't change the law, and they can't change this recorded history that I captured and have been presenting here for you on the TaxFreedom.com website in my book, The Simple Truth About Income Tax, which you can get over at IRSZoom.com for just $4. All of these exhibits and more are included in The Simple Truth About Income Tax. It's a revelationary, doc revelationary document package that will end the income tax and kill the IRS. $4 at irszoom.com. I'm offering you your freedom back and the documents to prove it for $4. So, since the year 2000, it has been impossible to use the law to identify any form that is required by law with respect to filing for the federal personal income tax under Section 1 tax imposed. It doesn't exist. It isn't in the law. The form's not required. The government is lying to you, and they've been covering this up and hiding it for 25 years. So there's no longer any document required, which means you can show the table in the law to a jury, show them what it was in 93, show them what it is now, there's nothing listed, and ask them how they look up in the law what information is required. And then you can ask them how the government allegedly does it. Or do they just send you a threatening letter to threatening to steal property if you won't submit and be a good little peon and perform as demanded, give up your Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights and become an indentured slave servant for the rest of your life in America? What do you say, America? Time to wake up and learn the law? Are we just going to stay asleep and let them put us all in the grave? Which will it be? Stand up and pursue the truth through faith in God? Or lie down and be a slave to a vile government for the rest of your life and your children's lives and your grandchildren's lives? for all time. File for an extension. Let's see what happened. 